Hello and welcome to Arts 235 Computer Graphics 3D Animation 2. I am your instructor, Thorin Teague, also known as Thor, and um, there is my contact information, uh, which is also in the syllabus. What is Arts 235? Um, it is an intermediate to possibly advanced um, Maya and going to be continuing to learn industry standard do's and don'ts, hands-on experience with Maya and input devices, generally continuing your education on 3D production. It differs from Arts 234 in that it does not build with each module. It's buffet style. So you can kind of pick and choose what you want to learn about and you can um, choose to focus in one particular area if you want, or um, most most students just kind of pull a little bit from everything, but um, there's a lot of options. So the class is entirely project oriented in that your grade, 70% um, of your grade is five production projects, which we will do start to finish. And start to finish means beginning with pre-production and sketching, ideation, into the production phase, and then from there, post-production, which um, will include a self-assessment, as well as sometimes um, things like additional layering or um, color correction or editing or things like that. Our class is online. We use Desire to Learn regularly. Your class announcements will be here under News, as well as Content, the Syllabus, and this is where you will submit your projects. Um, this semester I do not need all of your project folders, um, with the exception of the exams. If you have a technical problem or something like that, you can send me your project folder in the way that we discussed in Arts 234 if you need me to look at your project. But otherwise, all I need are the renderings and your self-analysis on D2L in the discussion forums. Uh, the calendar will be there as well as grades. So um, let's take a quick look at that. And this is our D2L section. Um, I've got project one open, and the projects all say just about the same thing. Um, so create a self-directed project of pretty much anything you want. For the first project, I'm recommending a, a nice still life that you can create um, something um, that shows off your modeling and surfacing and lighting skills without having to worry about animation just yet. Um, so read through that and our project self-analysis um, forum is here. It's also basically a weekly check-in because you're going to be posting us um, you're going to be posting something in this forum every every week. Um, you're going to be posting for the first week of a project your pre-production sketches and um, your basic idea for the second week of of the project it's mostly just a progress report you should have some production done some modeling um, some lighting and some um, some rendering done and then on the third week of the project most projects are three weeks on the third week you're going to uh, have basically your final self-analysis, your final, your finished project up. And I will unlock these modules now since we are talking about it. I wanted to make sure you understood what they were before I was talking about them. So this basically gives you some tutorials to go through. There is a large self-directed element to this class that you are expected to train yourself to some degree. Uh, each project uh, has a requirement for this. So you're going to have 
a few hours of self-training every week and that needs to go in that weekly post that I mentioned. That is part of your grade and your grade will be affected if if you leave that out. So um, I need to know what you're training on. Whenever I post a video about um, Maya, uh, which will not be quite as much this semester as it was last semester, uh, but whenever I post a video you can count that towards your training. So um, probably the first thing I'll be posting is Mudbox, which will go under Intermediate to Advanced Modeling. Now each of these has a link to a YouTube playlist and I'll show you what that looks like. So basically this is a um, playlist of different pre-production tutorials. They include um, drawing, concept design, as well as writing and pitching. So um, we're going to take a look at those as a group and you can count this towards your um, towards your training. I'll get to that in a, in a little bit. <clears throat> okay, the syllabus is a standard syllabus that explains what you'd expect. My contact information is on the syllabus. This is the general art office. This is my phone number and you are welcome to use it and you can text me or call me if I get calls from numbers that aren't in my phone book I don't answer but just leave a message and I will get back to you office hours I will be in a chat on D2L Mondays 12 to 1 p.m. this course builds on arts 234 it continues the approach of increasing skills and artistic practice in all areas of 3d animation concept modeling animation and rendering course topics include texture mapping particle s systems dynamic simula simulation and basic kinematic techniques the required materials are the same as they were last semester the deliver the list of deliverables is Blah, 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 blah. The list of deliverables is quite short. Uh, five projects and two exams. So like I said before, this is 70% of your work, all production. 70% um, five production projects. The first four are um, 50 points and then the final project is 100 points. So the final project has double weight. And then there are two exams, midterm and final and each of those are 10% of your grade and then class participation is 10% and a lot of that is going to come from you posting yours uh, what's what's asked of you every week and um, doing things on time and doing your self-training Uh, the late work policy, well, the class attendance and participation policy is just basically that um, you will be referred to an academic success coach if you fail to submit work. Um, this is standard across the board for all my classes. The problem with this particular class is that um, by the time you haven't submitted three graded items, you failed the class. So I'll probably um, be talking to you before that. Uh, forum posts and conduct use a college level of professionalism. Do not speak in a hateful, racist, or threatening, or abusive, or sexual manner on, on the forums. Late work uh, will be accepted. Uh, it's 25% uh, mark down every day that it's late. So um, what my strong recommendation to you is I would recommend that you submit what you have on the deadline and ask for an extension rather than um, coming to me kind of palms up with your tail between your legs after 
the fact. So um, that's a much better way to handle a missed deadline is to submit what you have and then ask for an extension. Um, plagiarism policy, do not copy and paste anyone else's work or any copyrighted material into your project and turn it in as is. Downloading fair use textures for your models is acceptable. Um, you're expected to commit time every week to this class. Log into D2L regularly every week. Check the calendar and the class news. View every item in content. Um, you don't really have to arrive to class on time other than the fact that you need to be here every week. There are no particular meeting times for this class. Uh, the submission guidelines lists how to submit your project folder through Google Drive and that's great and all. Again, I don't need your project folder for every project this semester. Uh, I only need your finished renderings or screenshots of your work in progress and um, your self-analysis. That is, unless you need me to take a look through your scene or your files for some technical issue you want help with. In that case, yes, submit me your project folder. But otherwise, if everything's fine and you haven't really run into any technical snags of that nature, you can just submit the, the renderings and the, um, the post-production analysis, and that is enough in this class. Again, with the exception of the midterm and the final exam, which will instruct you to submit your project folders as part of your grade. So don't skip the exams, but you don't have to submit the project folders for your projects, for your five projects. And these are the standard issue institutional policies. Read them and know them. Um, these are guidelines for use of the computer labs, which don't greatly apply this semester. Um, and this is our rough academic calendar. Um, this will be in D2L very shortly, um, hopefully by the time you see this, for at least the first few weeks. And the truth is it doesn't really tell you that much other than project one goes for three weeks, project two goes for three weeks, project three goes for three weeks. So um, that's really all, all that there is to this class. So, and I say that not like it's a small thing because it's quite a big thing, but um, as far as scheduling goes, it's pretty simple. One of the things, um, back to the subject of that self-training, one of the things that I want to bring to your attention is under Unit 0, B, Optional Materials, there is a subsection called Arts 234 Review. And for those of you especially who, who need extra um, review, you can count this towards your training. So in each of these you will find um, a copy of the lecture notes from the very beginning of Arts 234, starting right up at the very beginning with project management. It's all here and the videos should be here as well. Yep, so here is the Unit 1 lecture videos that I made, as well as some other videos that go through the basics. This stuff is really good to review, and with some of you, depending on how you're doing, I might direct you to review this and use that as your um, as at least some of your training. With others, I might say, you don't need this anymore, you can move on and stop going through this, and I'm, I'm not going to count it for your training anymore. We'll just see how that goes, but it's going to be an individual thing, so there aren't a huge amount of students in this class. I should be able to address everyone as, as their individual needs um, require. So, But you can see here every unit um, all the way down from Unit 1 to Unit 9. It's all there, and you should definitely use this to, 
to um, review and train for ARTS 235. So um, with that said, if for those who don't need it, you can jump right into this stuff down here, pre-production and pitching, intermediate to advanced modeling, painting and uh, unwrapping, cameras, lighting and textures, I'm sorry, cameras, lighting and rendering, rigging, deformers, forward kinematics, inverse kinematics, special effects and particles, compositing and post-production, Maya workflow and network projects. This one, this one you don't have to really worry about as, as much. I, we're not going to do the group project this semester, so um, it's there for your information, but don't worry about it. And then finally, dynamics, physics for rigid and soft bodies and cloth. So, should give you a pretty good picture of what's going on. Uh, the expectation for this class is that you will be creating five portfolio worthy projects. I ideally would want each of these projects to be in your portfolio. Uh, again, you have to understand basic file management to be successful at 3D animation. Um, spend time weekly and self-train. Um, you're responsible for the syllabus and lecture instructions video and audio and text. Um, late assignments, minus 25% each day. And contact me if you have any issues such as illness, difficulty with deadlines, change in schedule, anything like that. Um, you are expected to be digitally literate and um, comfortable with D2L, transferring files to and from devices. Um, I'm assuming that you've that you've already figured all this out since you've passed ARTS 234, so um, you must have at least a fair grasp on this kind of stuff. Uh, attendance is required. Participation is mandatory. The class is not self-paced. It is not an independent study. Please log in to D2L at least once a week. That's really a bare minimum. You're probably going to be doing it more than that turn in your assignments on time and complete the written reflections on time to receive participation points, not to mention the training. Um, read every required topic in D2L. Monitor your grades. Watch the D2L calendar. Watch for class announcements in the news. Plagiarism is a cardinal subject, so we talked about it a little bit already. Um, do not plagiarize. It, it is not okay intentionally or otherwise. That doesn't change the penalty if it was unintentional. Um, fair use is got some interesting gray area, but to simplify it, drawing or shooting your own imagery, utilizing material in the public domain, or utilizing royalty-free material you've paid for is always okay. Taking someone else's image or web page and turning it in as is with your name on it is never okay. The gray area can be interesting um, for the purposes of this class. If you feel like you want to play in the gray area, then um, that's fine, basically. So, um, but the point is, don't steal the work. Repurposing, retooling, reappropriating, and sampling is. Um, is a gray area and it's a very interesting gray area legally for purposes of education um, I, I welcome you to do it as long as you really make it your own and if you don't understand what that means just make original work and don't try to do it the purpose of this class is to start learning how to make your own original imagery scavenging imagery or components of imagery from Google, um, including public domain and royalty free material is not strictly forbidden, but it is kind of lame. So if you want to use those sources, make sure you really make it your own by altering or repurposing it in some way. 
um, the big exception to that rule for us, just us 3D animators, is um, I don't know what I'm looking for, tileable textures, I guess. Any kind of texture image that you can find. Um, you can see a lot of them right here. This is the kind of stuff that um, 3D animators are going to be using all the time. So, um, you know, if you're looking for a wood floor or, or a wood whatever, then you, you don't necessarily have to shoot it or draw it. But again, um, that is always the better way. So, this is out there. There's tons of this stuff out there, and it's out there for exactly what I'm telling you to do with it. It's out there so that you can put it on your models. So another example, planet textures. So if you want to make planets, you can get some planet textures, some imaginary and some real. And uh, NASA provides these in very high resolution, too, for the planets in our solar system. So, um, so again, sort of, this stuff is out there for exactly what it is we're, we're doing with it. It's out there so that we can put it on our models. Whoops. If ever in doubt, draw or shoot it yourself. Okay, that's about everything I can think of right now. So, um, good luck. Have a great semester. Contact me with questions and just have fun with it. Um, this is entirely your class this semester, so make what you want. Just make it something that you're passionate about and that you're going to have fun with.